When working on my own project, I find designing the user interface the easiest way to begin. It's fun, it's immediately clear whether your idea is feasible or not, and also forces you to think about user journeys while you work. This project isn't complicated, but still Interface Builder is where we're going to begin. Just as in project one, the single view app template gives us one UI view controller called view controller and a storyboard called main.storyboard that contains a layout for our single view controller. Go ahead and choose that storyboard now to open it inside Interface Builder and we'll see a big blank space ready for our genius to begin. Now in our game, we're going to show users three flags with the name of the country to guess showing the navigation bar at the top. What navigation bar? Well, there isn't one, or at least not yet. We need to add one, just like we did with the previous project. Now we covered a lot in project one, so there's a good chance you've forgotten how to do this, but that's okay. Single view app projects don't come with an app controller as standard, but it's trivial to add one. We'll just click inside the view controller to select it, then go to the editor menu, choose embed in, then navigation controller. With a new nav controller in place, we're going to scroll around so we can find our current view controller up here. Thanks for that IB. I'll just move it around slightly. There we go. Make it more aligned with the rest of our UI. There we go. Just like uh, that. Perfect. Now we're going to use the object library here to draw out three buttons onto our canvas. I'll type in button, then grab this thing and pull it out. This is a new view type. Not three of these things. There's one, there's two, and there is three. But as you might imagine, this thing is just a button users can tap. We want each of these things to be 200 points wide by 100 high. And we can set these values exactly by using the size inspector in the top right corner of Xcode's window. That's this ruler up here. Now, in the early days of iOS, buttons had a white background color and rounded edges, so they were visibly tappable. But these days, buttons are completely flat with just some text on them. That's okay though, we'll make them more interesting soon enough. So I'll choose my button at the top, go to the size inspector, and say for width, we'll do 200, and height, 100. And for the second button, choosing a thing here, perhaps make it easier than the document outline, we'll say width, 200, height, 100, the third button here, that's 200, height 100. Beautiful. Now the X positions, where they are horizontally, doesn't actually matter. But the Y position will enter by hand. So for the first button, I'll give this thing a Y value of 100, placing it 100 points down from the top of our view controller. Second button, uh, the X again is irrelevant. I'll enter 230 for the Y. And for this third button, again, leave X alone. It was a Y coordinate of 360. That should make them more or less evenly spaced in our view controller. Again, I do recommend using the size inspector. You can drag them around freely and scale them on the canvas if you want to, but the size inspector is significantly easier. The next step is to bring in auto layout. So we have some rules for our layout that can be adapted based on whatever device the user has. The rules in this case aren't complicated, but I hope we'll begin to show you just how clever auto layout is. We're going to create our auto layout rules differently from in project one. This is not because one way is better than the other, instead just so that you can see the various possibilities and decide which one suits you best. So I'll select our top button, the first one. And I'm gonna control drag, hold down control and click and drag from there to just outside itself of this white area up here and it'll turn blue, so it's gonna be used for auto layout. And when I let go of here, you'll see this menu appears with options. This is a list of possible constraints we could create. In this list are two we care about, top space to safe area, and center horizontally in safe area. Now you have two options when creating multiple constraints like this. You can either select one, then control drag and select the other, or you can hold down shift before selecting an item in the menu, and you'll be able to select more than one at a time. So you control drag from the button straight up to the white space in the view controller, let go of the mouse button and control so the menu appears, then hold down shift and choose top space to safe area, and center horizontally in safe area. 
When that's done, just click away from the menu to close it. That's the first flag complete. So before we go any further, let's bring it to life by adding some example content so you can see how it looks. In project one, we added images to a project just by dragging in a folder called content into our Xcode project. That's perfectly fine, and you're welcome to continue doing that for your other projects. But I want to introduce you to another option called asset catalogs. These are highly optimized ways of importing and using images in iOS projects, and are just as easy to use as a content folder. In your Xcode project, look for and select the file called assets.xcassets. This isn't really a file. Instead, it's our default Xcode asset catalog. Now, if you haven't already downloaded the files to this project, please do so now from GitHub. It is github.com slash two straws slash hacking with Swift. I have the files already downloaded, so I'll go over to Finder and look inside the hacking with Swift folder from GitHub. And so I there find project two files. And here are the flags we're we'll using in this game. I'd like to select all 24 flag pictures and drag them into the Xcode window below where it says app icon with this little sort of dashed square around it. So I'll drag all these things into here. And it'll create 12 new entries inside this sidebar. That's one asset for each country. Now, as much as I hate diversions, this one is important. iOS assets come in the sizes 2x and 3x, which are two times and three times the size of the layout you created in Interface Builder. This might seem strange, but it's actually a little bit of iOS magic that takes away a huge amount of work from developers. Early iOS devices before the iPhone 4 had non-retina screens. This meant a screen resolution of 320 by 480 pixels, and you could place things exactly where you wanted them. If you asked for 10 pixels in from the left and 10 from the top, that's exactly what you got. With iPhone 4, Apple introduced retina screens that had double the number of pixels as previous screens. And rather than make you design all your interfaces twice, Apple automatically switched sizes from pixels to points, which are virtual pixels. On old, old, old non-retina devices, a width of 10 points became 10 pixels. But on retina devices, it became 20 pixels. This meant everything looked the same size and shape on both devices with a single layout. Of course, the whole point of retina screens was that they had more pixels, so everything looked sharper. Just resizing everything to be larger wasn't enough. So Apple took things a step further. If you created hello.ping that was 200 by 100 in size, you could also create a file called hello at 2x.ping that was 400 times 200 in size, exactly double the width and height. And iOS would load the correct one. So you write hello in your code, but iOS knows to look for and load hello at 2x on Retina devices. Later, Apple introduced Retina HD screens that have a 3x resolution, and these follow the same naming convention. Hello at 2x.ping is for Retina devices, and hello at 3x.ping for Retina HD devices. You still just write hello in your code and UIs though, and iOS does the rest. You might think this sounds awfully heavy. Why should a Retina device have to download apps that include Retina HD content that it can't show? Fortunately, the App Store uses a technology called app thinning that automatically delivers only the content each device is capable of showing. It strips out the other assets when the app's being downloaded, so there's no space wasted. Cunningly, as of iOS 10, no non retina devices are supported. So if you're supporting only iOS 10 or later, which I'm sure you are, you only need to include the at 2x and at 3x images. Now, all this is important because when we imported those images into our asset catalog, they were automatically placed into at 2x and at 3x buckets, as you can see right here. This is because I had named the files correctly, France at 2x.ping, France at 3x.ping, and so on. Xcode recognized those names and arranged all the images correctly. Now, once you've imported the images, you can go ahead and use them either in code or in Interface Builder, just as you would do if they were loose files inside a content folder. So go back to your main.storyboard file, select the first button, then go to the attributes inspector. You'll see it has a title of button by default. So please select that and delete it. Instead, we'll go to this image drop-down box here and choose one of our flag pictures. I'll choose US. 
As soon as you set a picture inside the button, our constraints for the button are complete. It has a Y position because we place the constraint. It has an X position because we're centering it horizontally. And it has a width and a height because it's reading it from the image we assigned. So go ahead and assign the US flag to the other two buttons, deleting that caption every time. So I'll scrap button and assign the image. The third one, scrap button and assign the image. To complete our auto layout constraints, we need to assign constraints for the middle and bottom buttons. So if we select the middle button now, we're going to control drag to the first button, not to the view controller. So I'll do this, control drag from here up to the first button and let go. I'll then choose vertical spacing and center horizontally. Now choose the third button. Again, control drag from there, this time to the second button. And hold down shift, choose vertical spacing, and center horizontally. At this point, our auto layout's almost complete. But you'll notice that even though we chose to center the flags horizontally, this top one for me hasn't moved. It's stuck where it's placed. The reason for this is we need to tell IB to update all the frames of our buttons to match the auto layout rules we just created. This is easy enough to do. Just select your image view, then go to the editor menu and choose resolve auto layout issues, then update frames. And again, it appears twice under selected views or all views in view controller. Again, both do the same thing here. It doesn't really matter. Just use whichever one you like. That command updates the frames, the positions and sizes of each of the image views in our screen. So it matches the auto layout constraints we set. The last step before we're done with IB for now is to add some outlets for our three flag buttons so we can reference them in code. So go ahead and activate the assistant editor. You can do that by pressing up here, this button is overlapping circles, or pressing option command return, or by going to the view menu, choosing assistant editor, then show assistant editor, whichever one works best for you. Now scroll down in your code, make some space here above you did load, then control drag from the image of the first flag and name this thing button one. Second flag, we'll call this one button two. And this third one, we'll call this one button three. We'll come back to it later on, but for now we're done with Interface Builder. So select your control at Swift and go back to the standard editor so we can get busy with some coding.